Hi, I'm Guy Lawrence and you are listening to the Guy Lawrence podcast. If you're enjoying this content and you want to find out more and join me and come further down the rabbit hole, make sure you head back to guylawrence.com.au. Awesome guys, enjoy the show. Jeffrey, welcome to the show. Oh Guy, it's great to see you again and spend some time with you. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, you're so welcome, mate. You're so welcome. It's been a while. I um, The one question I wanted to ask you that I ask everyone on the new show is that if a complete stranger stopped you on the street and asked you what you did for a living, what would you say? Well, my first answer is I'm a neuroscientist, and then their eyes glaze over. I might as well have asked them if they wanted to buy insurance or something, you know. <laughs> so hey, then, but But they'll think about it for a second or two, and then I get this. So what exactly does a neuroscientist do? And then I tell them, well, we measure the brain. You know, so we do brain maps. Well, what's a brain map? Well, brain map is where we measure 20 locations on the head and look at what's called an an electroencephalogram. So an EEG and convert it to a quantitative EEG. That way we can see the patterns in uh, uh, what we're looking at in the brain. So they're very distinct patterns when you see people who have um, ADD or anxiety or depression or even when they're meditating. Uh, And I love to have fun with my colleagues with this. I'll show them two different brain maps side by side, and I'll tell them one of these is a person with a head injury and the other is an advanced meditator. Which one is which? Most of the time they can't get it right. Or if I'll put up two brain maps uh, and ask them, uh, uh, what's going on with this person? And they'll usually say, well, it's a head injury. And I'll say, no, both of them are advanced meditators. Yeah. You know, and this is their connection to the field. And, you know, so I've, I've identified like uh, 11 different markers um, that I see very consistently after doing 4,000 of these with meditators. And, you know, I can tell if somebody's just in the beginning phases whether they're intermediate or whether they're advanced in doing these, because the markers are very, very consistent. I think that's very cool. We we can also measure their level of intuition. So I think that's kind of fun too. That's very cool. That's very cool. And, you know, for me, it's, and I don't know whether it's my biased lens as I've gotten more interested in this work over the years, but there seems to be a lot more noise in a good way on social media and the internet around breakthroughs in neuroscience. And, and uh, it seems to be, for me, there's more interest coming in around it. Like, why do you think it's important work, especially coming from me, coming from the health industry? We don't really look at these things. We kind of go, oh, that's science. Leave that to the scientists. I want to deal with my health. I want to, you know, walk three Ks a day, make sure I'm eating well, and that's it. You know what I mean? But I think there's this aspect that more and more people are looking at. I would agree, yeah. I think it's not just people are curious. People are hungry for it now. Um, And and like you say, uh, everybody grew up and we had different educational experiences and so forth. Most of us did not study the brain in any part of our educational experience. So those people now are becoming aware of that and growing to an age where we're curious about our brain. And one of the things we do is, is we have a number of tools to help people measure them and do them on their own time schedule. Because what I find in working with people is, you know, it's like we're all on this treadmill and we can't fit one more thing into our hectic schedule and we're being distracted. You know, everything is competing for our attention. And that distraction is making it very, very difficult for people to meditate. And that's one of the things that I find uh, with a lot of these meditators when I work with them is the pattern of what we call too much beta, uh, the a brainwave, uh, in, in the back of the brain. And what that does is it creates uh, mind chatter. So they don't know the difference. And um, one, of the, one of the things that was a great curiosity to me is when a person's meditating, how do they know they're doing it right? Because it's a very subjective experience. All the only reference they have is their own. So, it, uh, and I used to get this when two people were sitting side by side and somebody was having 
an amazing out-of-body experience or interdimensional travel, and they were wondering, well, how come I'm not having it? When they're sitting there doing their laundry list, you know, all of this mind chatter that's going on, and, and they don't know that you can make your mind quiet and that you can actually direct that energy to go elsewhere. And, and uh, it, 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 like we were talking before, it's a difference between a flashlight beam and a laser beam when your energy is aligned. Uh, and back in 2015, I did a study on energy healing. How does it work? And, and that's one of the things that we found is when your energy uh, along those electromagnetic centers, there are three of them that are very important. One is the electromagnetic center around the chakras, and we usually will measure those to see where people are. Another one is the electromagnetic center around the heart uh, and the electromagnetic center around the brain. Now, what a lot of people don't understand is the electromagnetic center around the heart is 60 times greater than the electromagnetic center around the brain. So there are more signals that are going from the heart to the brain than the brain to the heart. And so um, uh, our sympathetic nervous system, when it's out of balance, are two parts to that, sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic ramps things up. And so we get all this information from the brain, you know, and, and increasing our heart rate, blood pressure, temperature, our thoughts, all of those kinds of things. And the parasympathetic helps calm it down. And when we bring it into balance, that's when uh, we're using all three of those electromagnetic centers, our chakra centers, allowing that energy to work with the cells of our body, the electromagnetic center around the heart. So it's like you have a highway there with, with uh, two lanes. One is called afferent signals going you know, up through the sympathetic nervous system and the brain. So, or the efferent signals are coming down, so they're balancing that out. If, if you can't balance it out, that's what we call coherence. And a lot of people do not understand, one, the word coherence, and two, how do I do that? You know, so, so it is possible to It's amazing what you're saying here, Jeffrey. And is science, is this accepted across the board, you know, in science at the moment? That the heart can be, yeah, yeah I, I think over the last uh, several years, we've seen a lot of people... <clears throat> um, uh, adapting to this. So, you know, people, more people, scientists are writing books about it. People are giving talks. <clears throat> they're creating podcasts. They're doing all kinds of things. And so the awareness has really grown. They may not fully understand it, you know. So yeah. when I start talking about quantum physics, um, my message today is a lot different than it was a few years ago. I mean, I can explain you know, to a quantum physicist about this, but the average person doesn't care. They want to know what does that mean to me? And really it means that there are laws in the universe that work whether we believe in them or not. Right. Yeah. And, and, and we have some control over those things. Yeah, so just to close a the loop there, and I'm just taking it back for our listeners as well and from my own experiences, then it's safe to say if we're in that high beta like you're saying, you, you talked about that brainwave state, which is around yeah. stress and it can be chronic stress that affects the nervous system as well. And we, and I'm guessing that we, be, we believe that's the way life is perceived from yeah. that lens. Yeah. yeah. We think that life is coming at us and yet we're the ones creating it. Exactly. Which is, which is hard to get your head around at first, but if, so then because you, you're talking about energy, so are we then able to take that energy that we're, we're, we're constantly putting out there in a, in a chronic stressed manner and turn it back on ourselves to create energy from inside out? Is that a way of putting it? Or? Well, sort of. Um, I mean, that's a really great question, Guy, because <clears throat> I think what we see is, um, let, let's take an example. If somebody wants to bring more money into so cognitively, in their thinking part of their brain, they're thinking, I want more money, I want more money, I want more money. But subconsciously, they're, what their subconscious is putting out there is, you don't deserve more money. Now, where does that come from? The subconscious is uh, where our subconscious beliefs are formed. What's a belief? 
Belief is nothing more than a thought that you have over and over again. And so eventually it becomes a belief, and that's what guides our behavior. And so when you're broadcasting that out into the field, the conscious part of your brain is saying, I want more money, I want more money. But what's being broadcast um, is that you don't deserve money. Now, so that's what gets attracted to us. The, in physics, the uh, law of attraction, it says that energy, energy is just a vibration, energy that is vibrating, within 17 seconds, other energy that is vibrating like that will be attracted to it. But what happens when those thoughts come together? It creates a constructive interference pattern. What that means is it increases the energy or the amplitude of the energy. So 16 more more the energy keeps growing and growing and growing once you pass just over a minute 68 seconds then what happens is it can now not just affect energy matter but it affects particle matter and we've seen the difference of a wave is a particle and there, there's a bunch of uh, videos out there on, on the double slit experiment and things yeah. like that they're kind of fun so uh, this is about how do you get those things aligned? Uh, because you hear all the time people say, well, if, if you're going to manifest something, you align your frequencies. But they don't ever tell you how to align them. <laughs> so we kind of uh, like to get into that to help people understand because we're, we're trying to do what we know how to do and we're not going through a process, but there is a physical process allows you to get those electromagnetic centers aligned. When they're aligned, it's like the difference between a flashlight beam and a laser beam. So now you can focus that energy on what you want. So contrast becomes a very important thing. So we have what we want, and we also have what we do want. So one of the things, now this is the interesting part of that, is, is that... Um, 80% of our thoughts every day are going to be negative thoughts. You ever think about that? 80% of your thoughts are, are negative. So tomorrow, 90% of everything that you think about will be the same thoughts that you thought about today. Mm -hmm. So I found out really curious, and I thought, well, why, why does this system default to what we don't want? That was really curious to me. Why, why do we focus on what we don't want rather than what we do want? Because on the we do want side, we have free will. You have to use your free will to break your thoughts away from what you don't want to focus it on what you do want. And so uh, this alignment process is, is about being able to do that. So I have a little alignment ritual that I do uh, before I go into my meditation, and uh, what I end up getting is a stronger connection between my three-dimensional self and my inner being. So, um, where you're getting pure signals, there's there's a part of the brain that goes from the thalamus that regulates a bunch of these frequencies that we're talking about, and it goes up from the top of the thalamus to the top part of our head that we would call the crown chakra. So here we have what's called oscillation, energy that is moving around and it goes up many thousand or we have no idea how high. But the average human being, their tuner goes from zero to 60 hertz. Now, those people who can meditate well, who can manifest well, they uh, work at increasing their tuner to go up to 100 hertz, 200 hertz. And that's why they have these unusual experiences. They know how to center that energy and, and being able to, to do that. So before I meditate, I'll align those electromagnetic centers uh, so that I have that laser-like focus with energy to... Uh, uh, let me use that energy. And that's a big part of what quantum physics is. 
You, you've triggered so many questions already on that because I know there'll, be people, there'll be people scratching their head listening to that. And then there's people like me who's experienced exactly what you talk about, wanting to dive deeper. But the, so just to pull it back to the beliefs that are controlling our day, because, you know, beliefs that we, we keep them in the subconscious and then the subconscious is driving our day. And like you said, we have 80% negative thoughts and so forth. And we're in these perpetual cycles that we can't seem to break. So is it what you're saying then? We, if we want to change our belief systems, we need to change our energy to change our circumstances? Or, Well, that's a really great question. Do we need to change our energy? Um, yes, <clears throat> we, we do need to change our energy. And, and it's about changing our thoughts. So we're changing the vibration, the amplitude, and what we call phase. So that that part of what we're processing when we become disconnected or fragmented, um, when we have things like hypophase lag, and we can see this in brain map. Hypophase lag means that we're if this is the amount of energy that we're processing, it's not processing the first half, but it is processing the last half. Per phase lag means it's processing the first half but not the last half. When you're in alignment, it's processing all of the information. So we, there is the corpus callosum right down the middle of the head that separates the left and right hemispheres. So the tissues that connect there is what allows that energy and information to transfer from left and right hemisphere. So going back to your original question here is, uh, do we change our energies uh, to, to deal with those beliefs? Yes, uh, we have to do that. And, and there is, there's a process, and, and we did a, a research uh, study on it, uh, Rob Williams and myself, who, who is the uh, developer of uh, Psych K. Yeah. Uh, we did 125 cases on this stuff of, of changing subconscious belief pattern. And we can do that quite easily. Um, and so this is about changing that <clears throat> because if we have a, that belief system, we'll go back to the example we used earlier, I want more money. So, uh, if somehow because of your experiences in life, you came up with the, uh, belief of you don't deserve money, you know, maybe your parents said, no, 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 you can't have this, you can't do that. And so you come to the conclusion of, I don't deserve money. And that's what starts getting broadcast. We don't know that we're broadcasting it because, uh, again, uh, a large majority of our thoughts are coming from the subconscious. So the thinking part of our brain will process at 40 bits per second, whereas the subconscious, where these beliefs reside, will process to that 40 million bits per second. So we're not aware that that's being broadcast. So we can change those beliefs, and, and some people try to do it through affirmations. You, again, you have to align the energies, and you have to uh, tell the body what it is that you want to do. Is your belief, because you, you have two parts of, of the thalamus down there, is it in the left hemisphere or the right hemisphere? We don't know. There's no way to, there, there is a, a way that can be told. Uh, you can determine if it's from the left hemisphere or the right hemisphere by using applied kinesiology muscle testing. Do, do we need to know what the beliefs are to hold us back or can we just shift them? No, you don't need to know what they are. Okay. Uh, you, you just need to know how you're going to replace them. So there's three pieces of criteria. One is it has to be short. Two, it has to be in first person, I, something. And three, it has to be meaningful to you. So if I were to, to put down a new belief on paper uh, and, and give it to you and say, here you go, try this one. Well, it may not be meaningful to you. And so your brain is going to reject some of that and say, well, that doesn't mean anything. But if you create it, and so there's a, a way that we teach people how to write these, and they're very simple, just as long as you meet all three pieces of criteria. But what we tend to do is 
who say uh, uh, we, we, we will use words like don't, can't, I can't use that belief. Well, the brain, as you know, will take out the word can't, and you'll get more of what you don't want. That's part of the contrast of, you know, being aware of what you don't want so that you will focus on what you do want. Your belief system is forcing you to focus on what you do want, and that's your free will. Yeah, okay. So, so Make it up. Make what you want. So the, just to tie that up then, let's use the money analogy to finish, right? Let's yeah. say whether or, whether or not we believe that we have a belief that's holding us back, but we don't have abundance in our life, and we mm -hmm. want to change that circumstance, and you say, right, I want to make more money or whatever it is. How would you then take that? So you would, so what you're saying is you'd have a mantra that you would speak and you'd become aware? Well, you, it doesn't even have to be a mantra because you're instructing the body um, through a process, and I can't uh, talk about that process on the air. That's <clears throat> and, and so you're, you're telling the body uh, what you want it to do, and it will change those beliefs. Now, years ago, I used to... Uh, uh, get invited to a friend of mine, Greg Reed, who would have these uh, 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 workshops uh, called uh, Secret Knock. And, and so it was by invitation only, and we'd have about 300 people there. And he used to have me do uh, what I call uh, brain magic from the stage. Now, that's not the real name of it. It was just my pet name for it. And so I would hook somebody up with the cap on, we would project it up on a huge screen and show them how to change their beliefs like that. Wow. And we had the ability to do that. Everybody. It, you don't have to have any special education or magic to do it. You just have to know how. Is, is fear a belief? Oh, fear. That, what a great topic. Uh, <laughs> fear is a byproduct uh, of that. So, you know, we have appropriate fear and we have inappropriate fear. Now, if you're standing out on the freeway and uh, uh, cars are whizzing past you and you're afraid, <clears throat> well, that's appropriate fear. But if you're fearful of other things that are inappropriate, uh, well, why am I afraid of that? Well, that, you know, that may have come from the way your brain was wired um, between ages zero and uh, three. So it, you're not aware of that. You have no filters at that time. So on Instagram, and I never used to be big on Instagram, but, but I've been putting all of these posts up there with some of the training videos that I have um, that people can find me. It's Dr. Uh, under, uh, Dr. Period, uh, brain underscore fitness. That's a brain fitness, yeah. I tagged you this yeah, morning. I did yeah. name, Dr. Dr. Jeffrey Bannon. And, and you can find me there, and you can see all these little videos, and then I, I put some dialogue in there to help people understand how our brain is formed. So we go through the baby brain and the child's brain, the teen brain, the adult brain, and the aging brain, and, and what happens at different stages of the life. Uh, of how our brain is wired so people can be, begin to know, oh, I do have more control over this. But we don't know that because most of the things we're talking about were formed when we were less than three years old. Yeah, amazing, amazing. So with that in mind then, how much do our, um, and I'm saying this from what I've experienced in the health industry, right? because we look at it very differently, a lot of these things. How much do you think then our emotions are affecting our health? Oh, a great deal, a, a tremendous deal. Um, one of the things that we help work with people on, on some of that stuff, um, I was speaking in San Francisco to about a thousand people and um, I, I met one of the developers of this company called The Brainspan. And we became a distributor. So uh, this, uh, it is a, a neural ass health assessment kit. So um, we, we provide the kit for people and, you know, they poke their finger 
and put a couple drops of blood on a, on a card. They send it into the lab and it processes a report. The second part of this is you use a touch device like a phone or an iPad and uh, you're measuring your, um, your brain functioning, your memory, your speed, and, and a bunch of things. You're, so this will help you know what's going on because um, it, it, there, is a, there needs to be a balance between omega-3s and omega-6s. Omega-3s are your fish oils and omega-6s are basically protein. So in our Western diets, and we'll include Western throughout the, throughout the world, uh, we have an overabundance of omega-6s or protein. And so that balance is mismatch, which causes inflammation within our cells. Now, that makes it difficult for the cells to communicate with one another, and it also uh, makes it uh, difficult for them to be healthy. So they will create things like inflammation, and it slows down our brain speed, our memory, our uh, a lot of things. And so the optimum performance of our brain is uh, slowed down, so we decline at a faster rate. But if you are using the, uh, the tips that they give you on how to balance this out, um, then you can bring that in and increase your longevity of how well your brain functions. Now that's one part. The other part deals with these uh, belief systems that we're talking about. So when that happens, um, you, you have to change those beliefs to work for you rather than against you. And you, you don't know what those old beliefs are, but you look at your behavior. Well, I'm doing this, and I don't want to do that. What I want is to do this. Okay, so you know that you have a belief that says something, and that's what's causing your behavior to change. So you create a new one, you install it, and boom, it works. And you get over it. You know, I tell people um, with my, my own journey that no amount of good food or exercise can outweigh me feeling like I'm happy and on purpose and, and moving in the right direction. And I, I quite often think about that, you know, because I started life as a plumber, Jeffrey, and, and, uh, and I, I, I found myself just doing it. I was like, I, I don't even know why I'm here. I was 15 years old, you know, working on a building site. Yeah. And I was so unhappy. <laughs> and I was so unhappy for a long time thinking that's all I had. And I, and I always wonder about that. You know? Well, yeah, it depends a lot on, one, what is your purpose? Uh, and, and we help people understand what their life purpose is. Uh, you know, and, and once you know what that purpose is, then it's a matter of manipulating your brain chemicals. So when we talk about being unhappy, you can become addicted to that. It's also a point of attraction when we look at our emotions. So... Uh, if you, everybody knows somebody who worries. So on this chain, I have a chart that, that I uh, had them design for me for my book. And, and that uh, is, uh, worry is kind of down there with depression and anger and things like that. So let me ask you a question here, Guy. Can, can a person who worries a lot raise their vibration to go to joy, love, and happiness? Well, Here's the answer. Of course, they can. They just cannot sustain it. People who are happy all the time can adjust those frequencies and causing the neuropeptides in the brain to generate the neurochemicals that they need so they feel happiness because it excites the pleasure centers in the left front cortex. Got so it. all of these work together in, in what we've been talking about in this podcast because if you know what they are, how the mechanism works, and that's what I love about this, because it's not dependent on me as a guru. I can impart the information to you and show you how to do it, but then it's up to you. Yeah. You know, how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? It just depends. So you have control over these things. It's just a question, will you do it or not? And if yeah. you don't like your life, well, you're the one that's creating it. 
So you're the one that's responsible for changing it. But if you don't know how, if nobody ever gave you the owner's manual, how are you supposed to do that? So, but we do live in a new era where stuff like that is becoming more prevalent. Yeah, totally, totally. What, what, um, what could you expect if I came to see you? From, you know, like, because you, you know, you got the brain map in, you got the neuroscience and that. And like, what, what kind of person comes to see you normally? And what, what, what would you, what could I expect? <laughs> well, we have quite a variety of people. We have, you know, autistic kids and, and uh, we have uh, people who are having trouble in school. We have adults. Um, you know, we have people who are high performers, uh, professional athletes. We have all kinds of people. Now, that's one of the reasons why I created this program called Your Genius Mind. And so if you go on my website, thoughtgenius.com, <clears throat> there on the homepage, you can see Your Genius Mind, and you can read all about it, and it gives you a bunch of the details and stuff. So there is this program. Uh, because you know, like things like um, webinars were very famous for a while. Um, and yeah. the thing that I found about that is in this hectic world, people do not have the time to stop what they're doing, get on a webinar and so on and so on. So our education is a recorded function. You can watch it at midnight if you want, you know, and, and watch it again and again and again you know, and, and take advantage of the energy and the information. So in the first part of this program, uh, there are essentially four, four elements there. One is help my thoughts are holding me hostage, how our thoughts do hold us hostage. One is creating your own reality. Another one is commanding the power of thought. And the third one is uh, about intuitive communication. So recently, and I don't think I mentioned this to you, but uh, not too long ago, I was invited to be in a movie on intuition. And, and it's, it's for the last seven months, it's been playing out there uh, to sold out theaters. It got really big play in, in uh, Australia. And, and my, my, my friend hosted yeah. it. Yeah, I'll just tell everyone, it's called the Personal Guidance System. Is that the Yeah, one? that's yeah. it. So... Uh, uh, it's a really funny story how that all came about that um, I, I was um, uh, sitting at home reading the book of another friend of mine who they had just written it. And, uh, and it's like nine thirty at night here in Arizona. And so I'm reading it and I get this really strong intuition to check my email. I don't usually check my email at nine thirty at night. And so, uh, so I did that, but there was an email from somebody I did a brain map on in Australia uh, back in 2013 and 2014. And she wanted to know if I would have any interest in talking to the producer of this movie. So I said, sure. And then with, within 10 minutes, uh, I get an email from, from Bill Bennett, who uh, then uh, we started dialogue and he said, well, you know, would you have time to do a Skype tomorrow? Oh yeah, sure. So we did that. And uh, so this was on a Thursday night and Friday we did the Skype. And then he said, uh, you know, uh, will you be able to do uh, an interview on Monday? So I yelled across the hall to my assistant said, Hey, can we make that happen? Yeah, sure. That'll work. We can make that we'll juggle some things and make that work. And so he promptly got on a plane in Sydney and flew to the U S and, uh, got here on Sunday night, Monday, they all showed up at my office and we did the recording. Wow. Just like that. Apparently the movie was pretty much finished, you know, and, and he was talking with this gal uh, and, and said, you know, we need a little more science in this thing. And she says, Oh, well, you need to talk to this bloke. <laughs> so she, uh, uh, she referred him over to me and the rest is history. And, so it's been going all around the world, and, and I, I'm tying with what I wrote in the book to the movie to, uh, to be able to go and show the movie and to uh, talk about it and things that I wrote about in, in the book. So. Wonderful, yeah. I have not watched it yet. It's, it's, on my, it's on my playlist. But it did trigger the question, intuition, it's real, and how much should we trust it? Well, you should trust it 100%. You know, how many times 
have, have you or people you've known said, yeah, I thought about this and I should have listened to myself, you know, that, that we do something and then it turns out badly and it's like, uh, I knew better. Well, that's the intuition. Now, this is something that we can measure with the brain map and see uh, when, when the different parts of intuition are, are coming into effect, when they're in alignment, whether you're in the beginning phase where you're blocking it out with all of the mind chatter, all kinds of things okay. that it, you know, we're able to, to help people understand what that is. And it's really an alignment between your three-dimensional self and your inner being. That's there you it. go. Yeah. Wow. And, and for me personally, just speaking out loud, I find like over the years as I've done more meditation, become more of the observer, allowing that energy to move, I, it's almost like it's become a muscle for me, Jeffrey, that I, that, yeah. I, that I trust implicitly and it gets stronger, you know, to the point where I sold my half of 180 Nutrition because my intuition was telling me it's time to move, move yeah. on and, and get this message out. And you know it's the right thing to do. You know, people might try to talk you out of it inwardly. You know, this is where I have to go. This is what I need to do. And, and you know it's right. Totally. And, and that's one of the things that we help people see in their brain map is um, you can tell the difference from their brain map that they, they have a level of discernment. They can tell the difference between their intellectual thoughts and their intuition. Yeah, got it. And what was really interesting as well... What's really interesting as well, Jeffrey, is that um, beliefs started coming up then about, yeah, yeah. you know, and the yeah. fear, and then everything was in unravel. But it was almost like if you can bypass that and see it for what it is and not let that kind of be the driving factor, then it's... Well, it's I think that's happen. an integral factor. So when you have these beliefs that aren't working for you start coming up, and, and uh, part of it is what we call split energy, that y y the energy that you have aligned, but yet we have energy and thoughts all around us, and we're picking up on that, especially if you've learned how to attune that. And it's about how do you focus that energy so you're not getting split energy because what you're doing with the split energy is you're creating the very thing you don't want and wondering, why is this happening to me? Well, you created it because you got split energy. So focus your energy, get it back where it needs to be, and then you're creating what it is that you want. Yeah, wow. It's so powerful. It's so subtle, but so powerful. That's so wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Jeffrey, I got, um, I'll change gears a little bit. I've got lots of questions that I ask everyone on the show. Uh, oh, sure. Go ahead. Uh, and the first one is, is, What's been a low point in your life, but later on in life, it turned out to be a blessing? Wow. Um, I've had a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it's, it's really interesting because uh, one that comes to mind is uh, when I was learning all about these frequencies and how to do them, and back in 2015 had, had done some uh, research on energy healing. Now, uh, prior to that, I've been traveling all around the world and eating poorly and working too much and things like that. So my wife and I were sitting in a movie theater um, and towards the end of the, the movie, I felt like maybe I had to go to the bathroom, like I was going to have diarrhea or something. And so I went down in the stall and all of a sudden the blood just starts gushing out. It wouldn't stop. I was getting lightheaded. And finally, I heard somebody out in the restroom. I said, I need some help. I couldn't even think to unlock the door. They had to rip the door off the stall. And I was laying on the floor and there was blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. And they took me to the emergency room at the hospital. So I'm laying on the gurney in the emergency room. And of course, they didn't tell the doctors this because they wouldn't believe me anyway. Knowing what I know about energy healing, I called in energy healing to stop the bleeding, which it did. And every once in a while, a different doctor would come in and they would ask me some questions. And they say, everything's normal. We don't know what to do with you. They kept expecting me to bleed again. And, and the, the long and short of this story, that, so they kept me overnight. 
and more doctors came in and asked questions and they finally released me because they couldn't find anything. Uh, so what had happened was the upper part of my colon, which happened to be the weakest part because I was driving everything so hard. My sympathetic nervous system was driving everything so hard that it, uh, it let loose. You know, and so then I was able to call in the energy healing and begin to heal that. And, and that was kind of a low point in my life, you know, uh, uh, and, and trying to deal with uh, some health issues when here's somebody who should know better but didn't, you know, and I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and didn't realize the balance that I needed in my life in order to function. So then I got really, really serious, even, even after talking with thousands of people doing meditation, uh, I got real serious on my own and said, okay, I'm going to get really good at this. And, and that's what started it off because I, I really had to hit the low point there before I was willing to make the changes in my belief system. And, you know, my diet wasn't too bad, but I made some changes and ate healthier and, you know, on time and, you know, kept my blood sugars correct and my blood pressure correct, things like that. So. Wow. Thank you for sharing. That's incredible. I didn't expect you to say that, Jeffrey. And isn't it amazing that we, we, I don't know, like believe they're always there. They always creep up on us. Like no matter how much we do the work or how much we think we're there, there's, there's always a lesson to be learned. With Yeah. Well, yeah, I, you can teach this as much as you want, but if you don't do it, what's the point? Yeah. yeah. That was my low point lesson was, you know, learn how to get good at it. Yeah. And look at looking back, were there any signals along the way where you were thinking, Oh no, that's fine. It would like with hindsight being a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Part of it was, was my belief system. And I was saying, you know, I can do this. I can handle this, you know, because I used to be an airline pilot. And so you get used to doing, doing, doing. And I think back to uh, Amit Goswami when I was on the faculty at Quantum University, and he put it this way. He said, it's not all about doing, 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 doing. And it's not all about being, because we all can't go live in a cave and just be, you know. So it's not about being, being, being. It's more like do be, do be, do, you know. <laughs> so getting the balance of, of the, the doing and the being and I think that's what people should strive for is learning how to control the factors so that you can be and do. Because there's a time when we have to do what we have to do. And yet we can still be and we can still manage that sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system to keep it in balance so that we get this coherence. And that's what it means. You create that coherence. Yeah. Doobie doobie do. I love it. That's brilliant. <laughs> Um, what does your morning routine look like? Oh, my morning routine is yeah, I usually uh, wake up about 3 or 3.30, somewhere in that wow. range. And uh, I, I never use an alarm clock anymore. Um, and so I wake up. And I go to bed pretty early, usually about 9 o'clock, because uh, by then I'm just whooped. Uh, <clears throat> but I'll get up about 3 or 3.30. Uh, I'll go through my alignment ritual. Uh, do my meditation and my meditation can last anywhere from 15 minutes to a couple hours or longer. I mean, there've been times when I thought I was in for five minutes and just kind of came out and it'd been like three hours kind of thing, but you're consciously aware of everything that's going on. So, and, and my brain never used to be able to do that, but it's such a good feeling. Sometimes I'll get in there and I don't want to come out. You know, it's just <laughs> like, it's really nice. It's, safe it's warm it's comfortable yeah i have these dark glasses that i put on it blocks out all the light yeah. and pull a blanket up over me and it just in my own little cocoon there and, and sometimes i will focus on a question uh sometimes you know it just depends on where i'm at so i'll do that and then of course take the dogs for a walk and feed them and do all that stuff get ready come to work you know, and then yeah. keep doing what I'm doing because I love what I'm doing. 
Oh, I know. Every time I've had a conversation with you, Jeffrey, like what comes out is just, it's so clear, you know, the passion for it is, is just infectious. I love it. I love it. Um, if you could have dinner with anyone tonight from anywhere in the world at any time frame, who would you have it with and why? Oh, wow. There are so many people. Do they have to be living? No. <laughs> Uh, Albert Einstein would be first on my list. Uh, next would be Nikola Tesla. Uh, so in my book, I write a story about when we did this research and the Nikola Tesla story. Um, so I've, I've had some uh, energetic encounters with Nikola Tesla uh, that are really quite fun. So um, we'll have to send you some of those and on the frequencies that we talked about. And, you can read about those. So. Love to. Well, when do you, when's your book coming out, Jeffrey? Is it well, we're designing the cover right now. So the cover is being designed. Uh, it's all written. It's been edited, um, you know, and, and so I'm really happy with it. It's, it's about 287 pages, you know. Okay. So a, um, okay. Big, Please, yeah. yeah, I'll keep an eye out for it. I look forward to reading it. Oh, yeah, I'll let you know. Yeah, sure. yeah, definitely. I'll let everyone know over here. <laughs> Mate, and um, last question, with everything we've discussed today, is there anything you'd like to, uh, to leave our listeners to ponder on? Well, I, I think it's really important that people make that decision within themselves that uh, they can do more than they are actually doing and that you'll find a guide, you'll find a coach, you'll find people who can help you in this because it, it's not their magic that you're using, it's your own magic. So develop your own magic, your own way, your own belief system to, to be what you want it to be rather than what other people are telling you you should be. And I think that's, that's what I would want most people to understand is you have control over this, do something about it. If you don't like your life, change it. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Love it, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. And where can I send everyone uh, that wants to find out a bit more about your work and what you do? Uh, best place is my website, thoughtgenius.com. Thoughtgenius.com. G-O-U-G-H-T-G-E-N-I-U-S.com. Thoughtgenius. Be beautiful. And I'll, I'll link on the show notes anyway, Jeffrey. All right. Thank you, Guy. It was a real pleasure. I always love talking to you. Like, likewise. Likewise. Thank you so much for coming on the show. All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.